Oh. Just dropped us right in, eh? Fair enough. So this is it. Okay. I am Nick Fury. I am the famous. You all know him. You all love him. Punishment Man. <laughs> Captain Punish. The Incredible Punish. And his sidekick, Crate Fucker. <laughs> you know him. You love him. <laughs> I really wanted to be, um, I wanted to be Nick Furry. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I ever saw that name was on uh, a friend's comic book that he had in his bedroom, and I was like, Nick Furry, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I have seen this, and suddenly everything is different. <laughs> hey, a dog. Hey, it's that dog. Unfortunately, we cannot pet the dog. Free it, can... and worst game ever. I want everyone involved with this <laughs> taken to the hate. We can punch over the head of the dog and imagine that the dog is experiencing petting <laughs> as a result. We can pick up grenades, but I don't think they're actual weapons. I think picking up a grenade is just like... points. There is a way to use them. I think you need to... Yeah, that's it. Jump up and then hit attack and jump at the same time. You might not be able to do it if you've got a weapon. Right. That is so complicated. It's weird. I remember there was some kind of weird quirk with the, the weapons in this. Uh, weapons, as you can see, the little number at the bottom only have a limited number of uses as well. But you get points for every one that you pick up, even if you don't use it. Nice. And as always, tell me if game sound is fucked up. It should be fine. Yeah, I have it quiet on my side, but I don't know if that's gonna. Have, well, I, I, that shouldn't affect anyone else. Actually, yeah. Either. That appears to be consistent with all emulations of the Punisher. It just has very, very quiet game sound. You got katana guys, axe guys. <laughs> yep. There's Hammer guys, like <laughs> twenty different weapons in the game. It's surprisingly involved. I mean, they are all fundamentally the same kind of weapon. It's yep. not like a baseball bat does more damage than a knife or anything, but yeah. Oh yeah, there's war hammers as well. I forgot about that. <laughs> a famous comic where Frank Castle grabs an axe and starts hacking people up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd read it. <laughs> Frank Punisher, the hammer. <laughs> oh. Hey. We got points for leftover bombs, it seems like. Let's see. The there's a cut version and an uncut version of this game. Mm -hmm. How do we know the difference? Should be able to see in a second. Interesting. There we go. Uncut version. Nice. <laughs> uncut version. He just blows a hole in his chest. Cut version. He just throws him away. Ah. Uh, now he is truly punished. <laughs> Waikiki I'm Beach. To be a Waikiki sexually harassing a waitress. <laughs> but no. It's because you got your family killed. Get in the pool. Go swimming, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> Did we scuba through the ocean and up through the pool? Is that what they're implying? Yes. <laughs> that is what happened. These are events <laughs> that occurred to the Punisher and Nick Fury, who, lest we forget, is the uh, head of <laughs> S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> that's like the head, that's like the um, lead investigator at the FBI going with one of his mates to beat up some thugs. Yeah. Very, very hands-on approach. <laughs> that's what it takes if you want to be friends with uh, 
Frank Castle. We're getting some blood, because I have an axe that I'm hitting people with. Yep, bladed weapons uh, produce little blood spurts. Not yeah. many, but for the time, it was pretty, pretty graphic. Yeah. Can't tell when exactly this game came out, like mid-90s? Uh, I think it was like 93, 94. Hmm. Um, a lot of the Capcom CPS games uh, were late 80s, early 90s. There's You'd be able to tell a... if this was late 80s. Yeah. I've been researching a lot of beat-em-ups lately, and the, the 80s ones look fairly bad. Yep. There's also a cheat that you can get set up in this, uh, which has you in shooting mode permanently. Turns nice. the game into an absolute joke. <laughs> I traded all my HP for super moves. Arguably was not the best choice. That was your choice to make. <laughs> now, Frank, has, Frank keeps saying something, and I don't know what it is. Yeah, the... There are a load of battle cries in this which are just complete nonsense. Yeah. It sounds like he's saying Yara <laughs> Yeah. That's the only that it is some kind of insane onomatopoeia. <laughs> oh yeah. Robot. Of course. Programmed specifically by the Kingpin. He didn't hire somebody even though he's filthy rich. Also, at this point, we, we're not even sure if we're looking for the kingpin. We, we're we looking for just some dude. Yeah, we were looking for a banker who was, like, corrupt or something. Then we stole all the money. Because we're the Punisher, that's what we do. Steal the money ourselves. And then we chase the banker onto a school bus for some reason. <laughs> and killed a bunch of thugs. Surprisingly, the game is... This game is actually a lot like the PS2 game in that... You start off doing one thing, and next thing you know, you're on an <laughs> island with nuclear weapons. True. Like, it has, it strangely has the same sort of, how the hell did we end up here <laughs> at the end of it? Which is surprising. Equally nonsensical at the end of the day. There we go, we got plenty of bonus bombs. Oh, we kicked its arms off, and then the whole rest of it. Goodbye, guard droid. <laughs> yep, we're gonna see that guy again a couple of times. Spoilers. <laughs> what are the odds? But, yeah, it's, it's an arcade game, of course we're gonna see him repeatedly. Basically, yeah. They only make a handful of sprites for these things. Mm. And they rake in the cash. <laughs> <laughs> They mutilate your profit margins. <laughs> He'll remove your opponent's intestines and hang them up in a tree. All around him like <laughs> Christmas decorations. Funnily enough, first time I ever saw that, you know, I'm, I, I think it's fair to say I'm pretty jaded when it comes to violence in comics and movies. And the first time I saw that rather infamous <laughs> page, even I was like, oh, holy shit. It's a little much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, read the Punisher arc, The Slavers. <laughs> it's something. Frank does not like slavery. No, no, sir. Which page? Cannot remember which page exactly, but... It's part of the Marvel Max series. Uh, yeah. Each arc is only like six issues. They're all <laughs> mostly self-contained. Some of them are... Some of them follow up on previous stories, but... It's one of the more self-contained stories. One of the better ones. Yeah. It's like the Robocop fan remake scene that we were talking about earlier. If you've seen the thing, you know the thing. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the one bit that everyone remembers. I used the picture of it in your video essays. A Frank reading a book <laughs> called uh, Basic Human Anatomy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember just thinking at the time, like, hmm, he's reading a book on human anatomy. This can only end poorly. It's Yeah, it's supposed to be very ominous. <laughs> uh, yeah. And indeed it is. Get 
Yeah, that's the thing about Frank Castle. Is some would call him an SJW. <laughs> <laughs> He's explicitly anti-slavery. Um, his backstory is that cops fucked him over and are notoriously corrupt, so he doesn't like cops generally. Yep. Uh, finds the cops tend to get in the way of uh, justice. So yep. he's definitely a, a 1312 kind of guy. Big time. Despises Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> um, frequently goes to uh, beat up um, clan rallies in the comics. Um, yeah. There was, a, I think it was, I think it was in the 80s or 90s, um, early 90s. There was one uh, extended storyline of him basically touring the country, finding uh, claverns to beat the shit out of. It was <laughs> lovely. <laughs> also, we'll note that there are robots called Pretty Boys here. Yep. Just to state for the record. <laughs> these these robots are fuckers. Yep. They but are also the um, annoying enemies in the game. They are rough. They have a lot of HP, and they like lose their parts individually. And their costumes are not very convincing. They just have hands and faces. The heads you can actually pick up and throw like grenades. Nice. I missed my chance. But yeah, not only does Frank Castle hate like all the things that we hate, he also hates vigilantes, ironically enough. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he has a serious mad on for uh, Daredevil in particular. Yeah. Spider-Man hates the pair of them, thinks that they're just basically getting in the way because they keep letting the bad guys, you know, live. Yeah. There's that. But also, like, Frank Castle has had his, like, fanboys, naturally. Oh, that, <laughs> that storyline. I remember yeah. that one. Yeah, it's actually very important these days. When I first read it, I was like, oh, this is kind of like a filler arc in the middle of an otherwise interesting story. And then, uh... You, like, get to actual modern reality, and uh, it's very, very important to tell that story. Because, Frank, yeah. um, there's, like, three vigilantes. One of them is an incredibly rich guy who kills any person of any sort of minority who gets anywhere near his community. Yeah, anyone who he feels is inferior. He calls yeah. himself the elite. Uh, yep. There's a mask <laughs> with uh, in the shape of a shield with the American flag on it. Yeah. Uh, wonder if that uh, has any unfortunate implications in this day and age. <laughs> it might be intentional, those unfortunate implications. Also, uh, there's a tank man. We'll just point that out <laughs> and roll uh, with it. Bonebreaker, if it's, uh, I can't remember, but I believe he's more usually um, part of a group of uh, mutant-hating uh, human supremacists. Ah. Uh, so Frank would still hate him. Cameron Hodge. Yeah. Uh, other than the generic thugs, most of the enemies in this, most of the bosses at least, are based on um, established Marvel characters. Yeah. Oh, gun mode for some reason. Yep. I kind of figured this was too weird to make up. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, there, there are a bunch of uh, cyborg dudes who, again, typically... Um, X-Men enemies because they, they tend to be more uh, they tend to have the weirder ones it's like between them and Moon Knight yeah that's the, who has the more fucked up rogues gallery yeah they're very supernatural in the first place the X-Men so they get to go nuts um, but yeah back to the vigilantes there was also a uh, a renegade priest who had uh, basically lost his mind and became a creature of horrifying vengeance Yep, called himself the Holy. Killed yeah. people with an axe. Of course. Why wouldn't you? Look at his little biting head on the floor. It's my chance to grab it. Should have gone for it. It was the biting of Isaac. Yep, if only. <laughs> and uh, the last guy, there, it's a trio of Frank Castle fanboys inspired by his vigilantism. The last guy is uh, Mr. Payback, if I'm correct. Yeah. That, there we go. I think that's right. Yeah, he's he he's the laziest because he just wears a bandana with eye holes in it. See, that's appropriate for his character though because he hates elitists and the wealthy, and he like goes to um, corporate boardrooms where they're like doing especially horrible things, like destroying 
uh, communities, um, you know, underprivileged communities and destroying the environment and stuff. He goes into those boardrooms and murders everybody. <laughs> and he like, yeah, he goes to the wealthy criminals and corporate overlords and just destroys them. And uh, eventually Frank Castle confronts this entire trio. And obviously he hates the fascist, murders him immediately. He hates the religious zealot because he has no focus. He's just basically killing indiscriminately. Has judged everybody to be guilty. So, unacceptable. Frank kills him. And then Mr. Payback, he has no qualms with the targets Mr. Payback has chosen. The problem is Mr. Payback does not secure the area and make sure there are no innocent <laughs> civilians. And he, in one of his rampages, murdered a... Um, a, like, maid at one of the buildings. <laughs> yeah. Inadvertently. <laughs> He's like, good hustle, but you fucked up. Yeah, like, he shot one of the CEOs, the bullet went through the wall into a maid. Killed her. And that was enough to end his life as well. Because, and this is very, very important, Frank Castle is literally a superhero. What he does is impossible. He is magical. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the point of the story. Like, you cannot be Frank Castle. Your attempts are sociopathic, and you are evil for trying. There was actually, for a, for a period of time, they established that he won't even harm dogs. Yeah. Because guard dogs... Guard dogs and just, like, general um, rent cops he has no problems with. Because, yeah. by and large, they probably don't know what they're doing. Probably, um, yeah. And... They are, in his mind, essentially innocent. Yep. Now, if that sounds arbitrary to anyone, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> but yeah, um, he avoids anyone who isn't actively killing, so... Yep. Um, they're, but they established for a while in the 80s and 90s that he specifically carries a, uh, a blowgun with him. Mm -hmm. With... Uh, soporific darts so that if he encounters any guard dogs or any rent -a cops or anyone who's just just there doing their job he can knock them <laughs> out painlessly yep I can also that sounds idiotic as hell to you <laughs> <laughs> you are 100% right yeah and in the especially realistic down to earth comics like the Punisher Max they have like lengthy segments before every killing spree where he is uh, casing the joint and figuring out exactly where the civilians are and how to avoid them at all times. Yep. He's like Batman uh, levels of meticulous. Yep. He, like, the, the, the joke with um, Batman has always been he can beat anyone as long as he has time to prepare. We call it prep time. And with Batman, you kind of assume that it's just, you know, like, yeah... He had this in advance because, of course, Batman's going to need a way to work out how to shut down all the internet across the world in one go. It's yeah. Batman. Why wouldn't he? But with Punisher, they actually show him putting in the work, which is just <laughs> mind-boggling. Yep. I think the bottom line with the Punisher is uh, he's sort of like Dexter. Like, he's just yes. compelled after what's happened to him to be this horrible murder machine. He literally yes, cannot stop it. His dead wife and children are a stark passenger. Exactly. <laughs> so he absolutely has to make it so he never harms innocent people, and he's that fixated on it and obsessed with it, and it is just absolutely impossible for an actual real person to accomplish the same. And he knows it, yep. and he makes a point of uh, killing anyone who tries to do that. Yep. I mean, say what you will about him, he is consistent with his um, moral code, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Like they've, they've, I, I have obviously I haven't read every comic that's ever been because a lot of the Punisher is really bad and repetitive. Yeah, especially in the eighties and nineties. Um, but a lot of the better stuff, you know, specifically tackles like the the obvious contradictions in his moral code and what he does and why he does it. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't read Punisher Born. Uh, I think it's a four issue mini series about That's pretty short. his final days in Vietnam. It's questionable as to whether or not it's canon. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where until something contradicts it, most people are going to take it as gospel. Um, but it, it tackles the idea of 
you know, was he a good person to begin with? Mm -hmm. Or is he just so in love with killing he took the death of his family as an excuse? Also, it involves literal magic, as several Frank Castle stories do, like where he becomes an assassin for heaven. <laughs> yes, we, we do not talk about that. <laughs> but it is in canon. Yeah, that's part of the canon. They they specifically mention it in Garth Ennis' run, yeah. um, where he, say, he says words to the effect of, been to heaven, been to hell, didn't, <laughs> like, him, didn't like either of them that much. Yep, they will not write that out. So literally, Frank Castle is magic, but even when he's not magic, He's still magic. Yep. Because um, he does impossible things. Yep. They... I mean, it, it's not really much of a twist, but it's very... Or much of a spoiler, but it's very, very heavily implied that um, Frank is essentially working as an avatar of death. Yeah. Like, literally the incarnation capital, of death. Capital D, <laughs> the Grim Reaper. Yeah, Mr. Grim shows up and says, hey... Let's have some more wars. <laughs> hey, buddy, how you doing? Do you want to give me a solo? Yeah, just... I, I had a literal know. lance for a second there. <laughs> just gotta yeah. point that out. Just to contradict what we're saying, the very serious, heavy, like, real-world implications of Frank Castle versus you carrying a lance. <laughs> <laughs> just makes me think of that, uh, um, I think it was a uh, hard drive article. What if Bulbasaur, but with a gun? <laughs> and the entire thing is literally just no, no, don't nobody make any sudden moves. He's got a gun. I don't think he knows it. Oh Jesus, he's 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 learned how to use the trigger with his tendrils. <laughs> <laughs> also, something you are getting at there is like Frank Castle in the Born arc is sort of at the very least like a villain protagonist, if not just an outright villain. He's more moral than a lot of the people he's commanding, but nonetheless, it does a lot of fucked up shit. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, because for a good chunk of the storyline, he's not even the protagonist. Yeah. Um, it's it's some random grunt who's got maybe like three days left until his, his tour of is over. Yep. Um, it's only really up until the, the last issue that Castle himself becomes the, the main character. I just figured out we have a dodge roll. Nice. <laughs> Double tap a direction to dodge roll. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can do that into a run attack as well. Yep, there it is. I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't know it was a dodge roll as well. Nice. Um, so yeah, Frank Castle, just like Dexter, objectively a bad person, and he knows it, and he just tries to do the best with his compulsion. Which is still not a justification. Garth Ennis has said he's like the worst, most evil character he's ever written, right? Oh yeah, he he said that um, he was because uh, he was comparing him. Well, I can't remember if it was um, an interview or if it was like a Q and A session or something. <laughs> By the way, where's my lighter? <laughs> uh, uh, that's probably already straight. I don't, a, I don't know if it was a Q and A session or what, but he he was basically saying like. You've written some of the most, um, frankly, repugnant characters, you know, between, like, um, Punisher, um, Preacher, Judge Dredd. Um, yeah, he's like the anti-hero guy. Yeah. Um, but he strangely has a real big, ende endearing, enduring love of <laughs> Superman. Yep. Yeah, he he's has like, a moral sense. Wait, but he also invented yeah. the darkness, we'll say. <laughs> Just for uh, what other yeah. things he loves. He, he he had a big hand in that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. he co-created it. <laughs> um, but he, he basically said, like, um, Frank Castle is basically... Well, he, 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 I can't remember the exact quote, but he said words to the effect of he's not exactly a justified monster. Mm -hmm. Um... But he, if he didn't have his moral code, or some semblance of a moral code, he would easily be worse than anyone else I've ever written. Yeah. Um, because if you read stuff like Preacher, he does. He has. There's a couple of characters in it, uh, Jody and TC, who are the absolute worst of the worst. They do shit in that that would get us taken off Twitch if we started to talk about <laughs> it. Um, but. 
you know, they are just like, well, we're doing this because we can. We're, we're not doing it for any higher purpose. He's at least got the um, the excuse of, well, I'm just killing bad guys. Yep. And he said, like, if he didn't have that, he would be an irredeemable monster. Um, but because he's essentially going after the people, like when, um, when when the Punisher is written well, it's it is wish fulfillment of a sort of he goes after the people that that you feel need to be gone after. Yeah, um, that doesn't happen very often, unfortunately. <laughs> Usually, it is just okay. Well, he's he's um, going after a bunch of gang members, but there's a lot of societal implications as to what's going on if you look at the big picture. Yeah, a lot of stories have taken what, what? to like having him have to deal with like his past, so he's not even dealing with like street level thugs anymore. He's just fighting guys who like screwed him over in the army and whatnot. Yep, a lot of it is um, mafiosos who he killed like 27 generations of their family in one go, <laughs> so now they want to fuck him up. Yep. Um, which is a lot of the um, the Marvel Knights and his stuff. Um, a lot of storylines involving um, a couple of uh, mafia families where he'd literally, like, I think it's the, the first or second issue. Um, he hides in a coffin at a mob funeral and murders everyone with uh, with an LMG. Reenacted in the Punisher PS2 video game. Yep. <laughs> and himself uh, said, hey, wouldn't it be funny if we did that? And, and they were like, was. you're goddamn right it would be. <laughs> um, I'm saying if he... No contest. <laughs> uh, the guys in uh, the, the bad guys and the boys are worse in some respects, um, but utterly the the fact is that they are they are fettered. They are not allowed to like they they have um, corporate interests keeping them in check. Um, it's only towards the end when uh, Homelander you know, really loses the plot in the comic, that they start becoming a danger. Um, he d Punisher doesn't even have that. These pretty boys do a fuckload of damage. I ate two flans in a row. <laughs> and then I got one hit from a pretty boy and I had no health again. <laughs> Frank just likes his flan. <laughs> he really does. It's dessert time. Like the in the other the sewers. food in the game is like <laughs> steak, ham, <laughs> hot dogs. Come on. <laughs> It'll get weirder when we get to um Alien vs. Predator, the food items in oh, that game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's something. It's just when you pick up an entire roll of Taylor ham because it's lying there and you eat hell. <laughs> Delicious salads. <laughs> The, the uh, Predator's favorite. <laughs> Rubies and Aquamarines. We're stealing people's precious rings for some reason. Yeah, the female ninjas tend to drop, like, ridiculously expensive rings. They're worth, like, 12,000 points. Yeah, after the, like, casino heist that we interrupted at the very beginning of the game, we stole, like, 10 bags of money. <laughs> Yeah. Mark for the dollar side on the side and everything. Just for points. I mean, it makes sense for Nick Fury because he is kind of an asshole, but... <laughs> Guess we gotta stay like further it. to the other side <laughs> of the screen. <laughs> Never know what barrels are coming. Punisher needs some cash for his van. Yeah, the battle van is something that never really made it past the 90s. <laughs> um, neither did Microchip, for that matter. Um, they kind of retired him after he got his head blown off in Punisher Max. A little bit. That was how they retired him. Oh, you don't get to joust with the lands, unfortunately. Yeah, you just throw it. Kind of a waste. 
Neat. Castlevania-style meat. <laughs> yes, I'll uh, have your finest floor meat, gentlemen. <laughs> we keep our freshly cooked hams in a barrel. <laughs> you can tell they're fresh because they're still steaming. Delicious barrel-aged ham. <laughs> I mean, if they can put uh, whiskey in oak casks, why not chicken? <laughs> not really sure where I was going with that, to be honest. These weird spider ladies who get, like, all the way down flat on the ground, completely prone, before they attack. I don't know for a fact, but I assume that they're based on Typhoid Mary, who's usually a character from uh, Daredevil, and occasionally hmm. uh, Deadpool as well. He's sort of like a not-quite-ninja, but not quite that way. The one I killed was named Midori, but that's where I thought. <laughs> yeah, definitely not Typhoid Mary. Kind of close, though. You killed all the uh, 60s Chicago gangsters that were here for some reason. <laughs> Fresh from the uh, classic movie, Nyah, she? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Is it just me, or does it, when the guard droid is doing that kick, it kind of looks more like it's just going for a jog? <laughs> yeah, the sprite work is fantastic, but, like, not consistent. It's all over the place. So, some of the animations are a little, um, unique. Yeah. Ground's on fire. This guy's a bit of a bastard, actually. They're giving us guns to deal with it. What triggers the guns to come out? Like, it Good seems arbitrary. Idea. Yeah. It seems that it's more likely when the the pretty boys come out. Yeah. I don't Ooh. know why. I got their pretty legs. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this is like a treasure some... boss. Yeah. There are some sections where you will always pull out the guns. Um, and it seems that if an enemy drops a gun, mm -hmm. you get to use it for like 10 seconds or so. Interesting. But other than that, really couldn't tell you. <laughs> it, it really just does seem arbitrary. Want to see how long it's going to let you play solo. Take the lead, Nick. I can't carry on. They got me. <laughs> God damn it, I just want to go home, get some hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an actual line, I believe, from one of the um, Nick Fury Max comics. My God. <laughs> <laughs> he says some, I can't remember the exact line, but he says words to the effect of, um, can we make this quick? The women that I like tend to charge uh, 10,000 a night. Glorious. <laughs> <laughs> Real sanitized portrayal in the Marvel Universe. It's the one everyone's familiar uh, with. That or something like, um, the women I like tend to charge more for a night than you make in a year. <laughs> Forget the exact line, but you get the you get the point. Certainly makes him an, a likable character. I think this is also the same storyline in which he nearly beat someone to death with his belt. Interesting. Unless I'm, conf unless I'm confusing that with uh, one of the Max storylines, which isn't possible. Um, I tend to read them all at the same goal whenever I do. Yeah. I love the absurdity of a comic book superhero throwing a lance at a street punk. <laughs> You touch that phone in your next piss and you know the one. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, Nick Fury's uh, special move in this. Mm -hmm. He whips people in a circle with his belt. Oh, nice. <laughs> I don't know how we're... There we go. That's how you grab people. You touch them and then you do the special thing. Yep. 
It's unlikely that that was a deliberate reference to the Punisher arcade game, um, but it's a really, <laughs> really nice coincidence. Yeah. It seems like these licensed uh, Konami and Capcom games for different properties are all, like, total nonsense that just happens to line up with reality sometimes. Yep. Uh, the Konami X... Was it Konami that did the X-Men game? I forget. I forget as well. That would make a lot of sense, though. Yep. Uh, that's been referenced in the comics a couple of times. Nice. Um, people running into Magneto and saying, Ah, welcome to die! <laughs> He's never taken it particularly well and just wonders why people keep saying that to him. <laughs> it, is, it is simultaneously the dumbest and funniest shit. Give me your floor meat. <laughs> you gotta get that Bog's Adventure meat. <laughs> then go on a gun rampage, just like in Bog's Adventure. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was... Um, I think it was Star Ocean 3. You can actually cook up meat on the bone like that, and this, the description specifically says... No creature in the world leaves meat like this, but doesn't it just look tasty? Have you always <laughs> wanted to try it like this? You got a bladed boomerang there, too. Yep. Nice. Like I said, there is a ridiculous number of weapons in this game, and some of them you only see, like, twice. Yeah, I hadn't seen that at all until just when you grabbed it. No, when I Did said, I grab when you I said, for a second there and use you as a weapon? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually playing the uh, most recent Avengers game earlier. Mm -hmm. And the Hulk can pick people up and beat <laughs> other people with them, and it is glorious. Truly. Unfor unfortunately, the Hulk himself kind of sucks as a character. Yeah. And Never been the most interesting. The um, most recent Hulk comics, uh, Immortal Hulk, mm -hmm. genuinely one of the best runs of like the last 10, 15 years. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Uh, very surreal, very unique. And they basically go, hey, what if the Hulk but horror? <laughs> and it works. Yeah, I've heard that reference in like mainstream podcasts and a YouTuber made an entire video essay about it, despite only normally doing movies. <laughs> Yep. Never been a fan of the Hulk, but that one series in particular. Stupendous stuff. Cannot cannot rate it highly enough. These bombs are blowing up their own guys. Think of trench Working before you throw it. dynamite down a elevator shaft. Mm. And Jigsaw, this is Jigsaw. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think he would get more of a uh, fanfare for being one of his archest of arch nemeses. Yep. But no, he just appears arbitrarily. Oh, we can throw the dynamite. I didn't even think of that. Oh, okay. Like, the one guy Frank normally cannot kill because it would end the comic book. Yep. Surprisingly, he does have maybe, like, five or six general um, recurring villains. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, quite a lot if you can sit, if, if you go, well, the Mafia as one enemy. <laughs> yeah. So they might as well be, because none of them last for more than maybe six issues. Pretty much. Oh, sorry. But alright. Oh, sorry there, dear chap. <laughs> that sounds like Nick Fury. <laughs> Nicholas Furington Hamilton Esquire. The third. Yep. <laughs> it does sound like the comic book origin name. <laughs> yes, his name was actually William Pendleton, but he picked Nick Fury because he thought it sounded more badass. Yep.
My name, my given name is Sue Perlman, but I go by Superman. <laughs> 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 A boy named Sue. I'll never catch on. <laughs> also, I have, before anyone asks, I have absolutely no idea why all the flamethrowers look more like modified fire extinguishers. <laughs> yeah, really. It seems like the opposite of what they should be. But... <laughs> Just asking for a problem. <laughs> No, I said the fire extinguisher, not the fire distinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> the worse, worse, or better. <laughs> hey, big ol' ham. 30,000 points. Glorious. <laughs> I mean, points are completely meaningless, but... They know, really are, something. yeah. Our score is ruinous. Your score is, for some reason, like a million points higher than mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somehow I've managed to land the, the final hit on pretty much every boss before now. <laughs> Glorious. <laughs> I don't know what's happened. I should have called this game the Nick Fury. <laughs> oh, got a guy throwing multiple grenades constantly. Yep, cannot kill him. I've been trying. He's like toasty, but more violent. I don't know, Toasty Guy was pretty violent seeing as how he cheered you on so much. True, he loved violence. He did not perform violence, typically. Synchronized grenades! <laughs> I like to think that Frank went, okay, three, two, one, throw! <laughs> this is probably it. The Kingpin himself. We never caught that banker. <laughs> <laughs> there was a banker? Yeah, right at the very beginning, he got away with his crimes. Oh no! Half Nelson! <laughs> <laughs> the strongest move in all of Dragon Ball! Yep. <laughs> also, if uh, someone grabs you, you can do your um, grenade special in order to break out of it. Oh, nice. I gotta try that, actually. Grab me. It's too bad, like, when you're holding your gun and you grab somebody, you don't just shoot him in the head. You should be able to just unload on them. Yeah, it's like they never played the PS2 game, but that's exactly what you can and often will do. Although you get a score penalty for it. Fuck your cage. <laughs> it's full of money, so yeah, break that thing. You do a good job of distinguishing which character is which, because you look completely different from me, so... Oh, yeah. In, in every way, um, I'm basically a palette swap, but... Yeah. Enough that... Yeah, there's, there's no mistaking the two. Yep. Only really get lost in some of the bigger fight scenes. Yeah. Boss fights in that, you're usually pretty good at um, working out who's who. Whoa! Nice. What? Oh, I picked up uh, the kingpin. Oh, wow. I missed that. <laughs> yeah, I actually picked him up and threw him. Did not think that was possible. Saved on video for posterity. Yeah, laughing businessman. Funny. Can't have that. Skinner. <laughs> Skinner. <laughs> and Nick Fury smash. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We've been going through Kingpin's like factories and whatnot. 
He's the one who's been making the fire enablers and distributing <laughs> them throughout the town. That's his evil plan. He's planning on uh, cornering the uh, home insurance yeah. market. Also, Bogart <laughs> is these well-dressed men that we're killing now. <laughs> he was actually being like, sure would be a shame if you didn't buy any fire extinguishers. <laughs> Bisque brand fire extinguishers for your safety. I think we did it. Perfect. <laughs> I got I got a perfect because I literally died two seconds before getting the final hit. Yep. You spent a quarter at the very last moment. You get perfect <laughs> bonus. I score. <laughs> Escape sequence. Platforming. Last no. <laughs> Now that's just rude. There's no need to body shame. <laughs> also, could have crammed the grenade in his mouth. Frank did that Two in the PS2 game. Going for a drive. Yep. Like the anguished roar of an exorcised demon. <laughs> Sell down, Walt Whitman. Getting real poetic. You can just see these words in a yellow box over a series of panels. <laughs> this is him writing in his war journal. Yep. That's right, Frank Castle does, like, resort to poetry after all of his murders. Yes, remember, Frank Castle writes a diary like a teenage <laughs> girl. <laughs> in many ways. It's like a teenage girl, she had access to an M40. Yep. And what are the odds? The kingpin just went right through the building as it exploded. Speaking of which, they're shooting and blowing up the credits. Yep. That's a great honor. These are the most high testosterone credits you will ever encounter in your life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if this were a comic book and that were Frank and his writings, the uh, last panel would have been the kingpin's hand reaching out of the rubble. <laughs> and then the finger twitches! <laughs> then the finger twitches! They actually put an animated gif in the comic book for the first time ever. <laughs> just no, to show as little those, motion as possible. It's one of those lenticular things. <laughs> you just have to sort of like wiggle it back and forth. That would be so awesome. And the thing with the 90s is they probably would have done that if they thought it would have sold, because they did so many stupid gimmicks to sell comics. Seriously. <laughs> the cackling heads from the Pretty Boys. At least, at least they're mixing them up. Yep. Every different type of explosive they can find. Punisher fanfic. Yeah, it's between him and Kamala Khan as to who writes the more fanfic about Marvel heroes. <laughs> oh, I got second place because you were millions of points ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, lame. They, they actually censored out ass. <laughs> Damn it, now I should have put in poo. Yep. Probably would have been censored out as well. <laughs> now let's, ironically enough, watch the Punisher's or origin story. <laughs> which we all know. It's probably going to play out in complete silence. No comics. <laughs> it's going to be a weird tonal shift, because the game was silly as hell. And this is child murder. <laughs> yep. You see his family get shot graphically. <laughs> yep. Here they come. There they go. <laughs> the it's not quite as children on the lawn. Not quite as severe as the Punisher Max, but it's about as hardcore as you can get in an arcade game in the nineties. Yeah. I mean, remember back in the nineties, arcades were still considered to be mostly for kids and teens. Yeah. And 
Yeah, child murder just just happening. <laughs> it was relatively uncommon in those days <laughs> to show children, children being murdered. Well, I mean, back then people weren't all pissy about it. Yep. <laughs> they loved it. You could, you could get away with that shit back then. <laughs> so we got a little bio on Frank. U.S. Marine. Not much of a bio for being Frank, but he does have a Rambo bandana for some reason. That's not in the game. Let's see how they changed he, uh, Nick Fury's character model for no reason. He did wear one occasionally on covers, but it was never really a part of his outfit, you know? Yeah, right as you were mentioning that, I remembered some familiarity. I think that was a piece of quiche that dropped next to uh, Nick Fury. Okay, apparently he has an Errol Flynn-style moustache in this one. <laughs> Why not? Possibly a Gomez Adams, it's hard to tell. Yep. Either way, you probably wouldn't want to let him near your door. There we go, no more spoilers for the game we just played. I do want to show off one last thing, so I'm going to jump in real quick. And get myself killed. Oh, the game over screen. Exactly, yeah. yes. These old Capcom games have really great game over screens. Oh, yeah. A lot of them... Um, I mean, the one the one which most uh, obviously springs to mind is um, Final Fight mm -hmm. Dynamite. Um, Ninja Gaiden also had a really good one as well involving a saw blade. <laughs> Maybe we'll show that off someday. We have a shitload of arcade games now that we intend to check out. Oh, yeah. Pretty much anything... Well, we haven't ruled anything out, but anything except... Anything co-op that isn't really a shooter... Yeah. Um, we're, is, ...is on the list. Yep. Uh, no one-on-one -on -one beat em ups for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, I don't think either of us are particularly invested or that good at them. Nay. Hey. Kill me faster. They should have a lot of enemies. Come on, what are you waiting for? <laughs> They're getting right, me. Crossing the streams, shit. <laughs> Do I have to die again? Of course. Your quarter gets you two lives. But yeah, probably every Tuesday and Thursday, if you want to uh, come in and vote on what game we're going to play. We didn't even really need to take a vote this time, because obviously the Punisher was going to win. <laughs> but next time... Yeah, I, think that's, I think that's supposed to be Microchip. Oh, interesting. Even a I CPR. Don't for, I don't know for certain, but... It looks enough like um, how he kind of maybe put a beard on him. And that's him. I wonder if Nick Fury would have had a different uh, a medic mm. failing to resurrect him. <laughs> the end. So there we go. That's the Punisher. You've waited years for us to get to it. <laughs> now we have. Next, we tackle the Punisher on Game Boy. Hooray. <laughs> the Punisher shitty XBLA game that was delisted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get an oh. emulator for it. Oh, God. Wasn't that like a really bad top down shooter? Probably, uh, I could barely was, even was, watch it. Um, it was supposed to cash in on the movie and came out like five years after it, but they still got Tom Jane to voice uh, the main character, so that was oh, wow. okay. I didn't even know it had voice acting. Thanks for watching this, though, and uh, see you again soon. Later, everyone.